My aim here is to create the best video that answers the question, what is machine learning? So if you already know what machine learning is, this is the video that you'll want to share with your colleagues and your friends who need to know the answer to that question. A lots of videos already online try to do this, and lots of videos start off with grandiose statements like, the world is full of data, and we're always gonna have lots more data, and we need to understand what it is, and we use machine learning. That's not answering the question what machine learning actually is. Neither is the focus on all of the products that we have in our everyday lives that contain machine learning and use machine learning and how it's surrounded. But that doesn't answer the question, what is machine learning? And actually, it's not magic, and it is something that we can get our heads around. And this video is aimed at both non-technical and technical anybody who wants to understand the concept of machine learning. So first of all, let's just take a look at how we get computers to do the things that we need. So if we take any computer, pretty much since the day dot of when computers were invented, we install applications and programs on that computer in order to be able to perform the tasks that we need. So take, for example, a spreadsheet, something that most of us will be familiar with. In the spreadsheet, let's fill out some values. So we have three numbers in our spreadsheet. If we want to add those numbers together, then we just highlight those cells. We say that we want to add the cells together and we get the number out. We get the answer out. Pretty straightforward stuff. Now to write an application that does this, it's really very easy. We say that we have these three numbers. We say we want to add them together. If I go to any developer, even me, we could create an application that adds three numbers together and gets the answer out because we can write a procedural language. We can say, okay, we start off, we load the number, the second number, then the third number. We perform a mathematical operation. We get the answer out. It's a set of procedures we can do. And pretty much every computer program that we use follows that kind of routine. We start somewhere, we look for inputs, we churn some data around, we provide the outputs. Even YouTube, the platform that we're using to watch this video, essentially works on that principle, just at a much, much bigger scale. Lots of data being added and subtracted and shifted around, inputs being processed and outputs being provided. That's how computer programs work, and we can get developers, software developers, to create the code that does that. Now, we look at machine learning. What's different about machine learning? Well, with machine learning, we don't write the code. What we do is we take algorithms that have been developed by data scientists and people in white coats working in laboratories inside of university, and we get those algorithms to write the code for us. So we provide data to an algorithm and ask that algorithm to look for patterns. That's what machine learning is. Here is a bunch of data. Algorithm, analyze this data and find patterns. Now, how can we make use of that? How do we make use out of that. And there's lots of classic examples out there like we can look at images of dogs and cats and figure out which ones are dogs and which ones are cats. And that's, that's too hard for right now. Let's go simpler than that. Imagine that I work for an organization that has a list of customers. So an online shop, for example, or a regular shop. And I have just a massive database list of customers. And for each of those customers, I've got different attributes. So I've got, say, for example, their age, maybe where they come from, how much they've spent in my store, the number of products they've bought, all the kinds of stuff that we might capture about customers coming to buy things from me and my store. And I also have a column in that spreadsheet, in that database, which says whether they're a member of the loyalty program or not. 
Okay, so at this point, I've just got a whole bunch of data. How could machine learning help me with this? Well, I'm interested in understanding the kinds of customers who are likely to join my loyalty program versus those who are not likely to join the loyalty program. And I can look at my big database, my big spreadsheet, my big table of customer data, and I can try and figure that out for myself just by looking at it myself with my eyes and my brain. But there's so much data there, and there's so many different ways of slicing it and variations in the data that I just can't see a pattern. The fact is that some customers become loyal members and loyalty members, and some don't. So what I can do is I can take that table of data and provide it to an algorithm, a machine learning algorithm, and say, look at that data and try to find a pattern. Because what I'm interested in is the difference between customers who are in the loyalty program and those that are not. And so when we run it through, we may find that the algorithm says, hey, I've actually found the difference between the two. I can't explain it to you. I can't necessarily show you, but I've written my own code and I've got that code ready if you want to use it. And so that code is then called the model. So we can then take our machine learning model and we can take some new customer data, customers that are not yet part of the loyalty program and have basically new customers, for example, and we can place that data into that model and we can get an answer out. And that model can say, based on everybody that I've looked at before, all of the information that I processed before, is that customer likely to be a member of the loyalty program in the future or not? And so this is an example of the way that we can actually use machine learning in real life. We take lots of data and then we show it to our algorithm. We create a model that answers the question we asked. And the question in this case was, what is the difference between a customer who is likely to be in our loyalty program or not? And then we've got that encapsulated in code, but code that we didn't write. That's machine learning code. That's our model. Now, from there, machine learning, we can go to all of those other places that we might have heard about. How do I differentiate between a picture of a dog and a cat, or a bicycle and a car, or a hot dog and a not hot dog? Yes. How do we make that differentiation? Well, in the same way that we had our table of data with lots of examples of the things that we wanted to look for, we can also provide images that are all labeled. So we can say, here's a bunch of dogs, here's a bunch of cats analyze these pictures to figure out the characteristics that make a dog versus the characteristics that make a cat. Then when I show you this new image, you'll be able to tell whether this is a dog or a cat based on that statistical analysis that you did before. The same goes for audio analysis, speech recognition. As long as you've got quantities of data where you already know what that thing is, then machine learning can process that look for the patterns, and then allow us to use those patterns on new data in the future. Now, what I've described there is an example of supervised learning. We call it supervised machine learning because we've got existing data which is already labeled. For the dogs and cats, they were labeled dogs and cats. For our customers, they were labeled member of a loyalty program or not. So we already have this data with the answer already built into it. And so we can train a model from that to be able to make predictions about new data. But there are other ways that we can work with machine learning models as well, different kinds of algorithms. We have unsupervised algorithms where we just say to the algorithm, analyze this data and find a pattern in it that I can't see, even when I essentially have no question. So classify, cluster our data. And so we can use that for data analysis. Let's think of our customers again. We can perform an unsupervised machine learning algorithm over the top of our data, cluster our data into different groups. Then we will have to go in and say, okay, well, what makes this group special? What makes this group special? Oh, okay, I actually see that you've segmented my data in a way that I'd never thought about before. 
That's unsupervised machine learning, where it's analyzing the data without really us asking that specific question. And then finally, reinforcement learning. And this one is kind of my favorite, but often not used. Reinforcement learning is probably the most similar to training a dog or a cat or a human. If you have kids, this is what you'll often do. You give them a task. And as they work through that task, if they get things right, you give them a reward. If they get things wrong, well, let's just say you don't give them a reward. Reinforcement learning works in exactly the same way. We can give the algorithm a task, and robotics is often used as an example in this space, or playing a game. Then initially, the algorithm has no idea what it's doing, and it tries lots of random moves. When it gets something right, initially perfectly through chance, we give it a reward and we say, yes, we liked that. Try to do that again. So it learns the right kinds of things to do. When it does something wrong, it gets no reward. So it learns the wrong kinds of things to do. And over many iterations and a very long time, the algorithm will learn how to perform a task, whether that be winning at a game or driving a car. Incidentally, we wouldn't use reinforcement learning to teach a real car on the real road, but we do use that for DeepRacer, AWS DeepRacer, which is just behind me. So there's a few different examples of machine learning, and I hope that with that description, you've got a sense of how we use machine learning in the real world. Yes, it is about processing vast quantities of data. Yes, it's something that we can do to make sense of that vast quantity of data that surrounds us. Yes, it's the technology which sits inside of the smart devices and the recommendation engines that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. But when it comes down to us in the real world, with most of the real business problems that we actually face, Look at it from the point of view of that customer database. How can I get more insight into the data that I have in my normal business? How can I classify the data that I have? How can I get more value out of that data? And that's what machine learning is. Please give me a like if this explained what machine learning was to you. Put a comment below if you've got any questions or you want to talk about it further. Connect with me on LinkedIn is where I have most of my conversations about machine learning. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support on my channel. I'm going to say it, but please do consider subscribing if you liked this video and the other kinds of videos that you see on my channel. Like this video. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one.